today. Um, she's filming Stephen King's The Stand. <laughs> yeah, and she had that hair thing yesterday. It was fabulous, and she will be back on Monday. She's going to be out in and out with that, I guess. But here we are. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to dive right into this story because D.C., Washington, D.C., is buzzing and Congress is behind closed doors right now. Why? It's over an intelligence official who reportedly blew the whistle. this. He blew the whistle on a, a disturbing promise that he heard Trump make to a foreign leader, okay? So, yes. It's a, a very Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, joining us now to break it all down for us is a reporter who helped break the story for the Washington Post, Shane Harris. Shane, welcome to the show. It's Joy Behar speaking. I know you can't see us, but we can see you. So, Good um, to be here. Thanks. Yes. So break down the story for us in a nutshell. What exactly happened and how did you learn about it at the Washington Post? Well, about on August 12th, this individual whose identity we still don't know is an intelligence official filed a complaint with the inspector general that oversees all of the spy agencies in the government, yeah. alleging that there was this conversation that the president had with a foreign leader in which he made some kind of troubling promise. The inspector general, which is an independent watchdog that looks over wrongdoing, looked at this, found it was credible, and it met a legal threshold for being an urgent problem. Normally what happens is that the inspector general then tells Congress, but we understand that Trump administration officials blocked them from doing that. The Congress eventually found out about it, and what we were able to show last night was at least some of what the substance of this allegation is. The Congress, it's important to know, still doesn't know exactly what this whistleblower is alleging, but now we found out it involves the president and a conversation that he had with a foreign leader and some promise that was troubling enough and disturbing enough to make this official go and tell higher authorities so it could be investigated. Uh huh. So we don't know what the promise was, and we don't know who the leader was. But we actually know who the whistleblower is. At some, we know who that is. We don't know it, but somebody knows it. What can you tell us about the whistleblower, the person who actually did this? Well, this person was at one point working on the National Security Council, which is a group inside the White House, but works for an intelligence agency and was sort of over on temporary detail at the White House. We don't know if this person saw the behavior then or later, but uh, would have been in a position to be not a junior person. Usually when you're talking about somebody from a spy agency that goes over to the White House, these are people who are more senior. That's important because people who work in the White House understand that Donald Trump says classified things out Loud. He does a lot of things that are very unconventional. This person would have known how to separate that kind of everyday behavior from something more serious, and it seems like it fell into that latter category for this person. Well, and that's where it gets confusing. If, if it was so urgent, why it was shut down? Why wouldn't the director of national intelligence want Congress to look into this? Isn't that their job to protect the country, even at the expense of the president? It seems like something's trying to be covered up in some way, or is that is that thinking too much of this? No, I don't think so. I mean, what, what we know is that the director of national intelligence ordinarily would transmit this complaint to the Congress so they could investigate it as part of their constitutional oversight duty. But somebody in the DNI's office made the decision to go ask the Department of Justice, hey, can you take a look at this? And when they did, they said this involves what's called privileged communications. So when the president talks to a foreign leader, that's covered by executive privilege. They said you don't have to tell Congress about this. This is very unusual and maybe unique. It is not how this is supposed to work. That information should go from the DNI to Congress and instead it took this kind of detour where Trump administration officials apparently weighed in and said to the DNI, no, you not only don't you can't you not have to tell Congress, you're not going to tell Congress about this. Hmm. Hi Shane, this is Sonny Hostin. Uh, can you explain to people who the DNI reports to and who he is and who could possibly give him the order to kill it? Yes, yeah, so, well the DNI reports to the president. Um, it's a fairly new position in the spy agencies. It was created as a result of the 9-11 attacks. 
uh, when Congress and experts believe that we needed one official to look over all of these different, now 17 different intelligence agencies that weren't all playing like a team for 9-11. So that person is supposed to have kind of oversight of the whole apparatus of American espionage. So when we talk about somebody higher, at a higher authority than that, you're talking about the president or certainly people very close to him in the White House. That's who the DNI answers to. And a lot of people in the intelligence community answer to the DNI. Now, uh, in reading this story, I was, uh, it, it seems to me that the Justice Department got involved and instructed the DNI uh, that they could not tell Congress. Now, that doesn't make sense to me. Does the Justice Department even have a role in this? Isn't this the job of Congress? Adam Schiff is calling this illegal and a cover-up. Is, is he right? Well, it certainly seems like uh, Adam Schiff has a point here insofar as the Justice Department does not traditionally. In fact, I'm not aware ever of them having weighed in on something like this. But I think it also tells you how unusual this is, a complaint that involves the president. It does make sense if you think about it. If the DNI had this and said, hold on, here's a whistleblower complaint about the president and a communication with a foreign leader. We, the DNI, don't have authority over the president. He has authority over us. So we have to go maybe to another organization that weighs in on uh, legal options and analysis for the whole of government. Well, that's the Justice Department and potentially the White House Counsel's Office as well. But to then say that this thing has to be sort of covered up and not transmitted to Congress, that creates a real problem. There probably have to be ways, Adam Schiff would say, for us to be able to find out about this information and still protect whatever privilege or prerogative the president might have. You can't just simply bury it. Because my reading of the law says that the DNI shall, not must right. or, or could or would, shall report it to Congress. Is that correct? Yeah, that's exactly it what it said. And already some legal experts are saying the analysis the DNI is offering up just doesn't compute with what the law says. Hmm. Hi, this is Megan. President Trump is uh, going a little crazy on Twitter about this. Another fake news story, it never ends. Virtually any time I speak on the phone to a foreign leader, I understand that there may be many people listening from various U.S. agencies, not to mention those from the other country itself. Um, I, I know that we have heard presidents promising things to foreign leaders before, like when President Obama was caught on a hot mic telling then the Russian president, Medved, that he would, quote, have more flexibility after the election. So can you tell our viewers why there's a difference between that and this? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think when we saw that conversation with Obama and Medvedev, you're kind of seeing, you know, the horse trading and the deal making. And while we don't know exactly what the substance was of the con or the details of the conversation with Trump and this leader, it was enough that this fairly experienced intelligence official, we think, looked at it and said, this isn't just normal negotiating. This isn't kind of the give and take and the back and forth. There's something happening here that rises to the level of some kind of abuse. And the inspector general looked at it and found that, at least according to the definition under the law, that that was a credible allegation. Mm -hmm. Just last week, um, CNN, CNN excuse me, was slammed for erroneously reporting a thinly sourced story that the CIA had to remove a spy from Russia because of Trump sharing intelligence that could possibly have endangered him. I think the question we all had this morning, is there a rush to report on Trump because people want to pin things on him and just because he does so many things that, as you said, are deeply unconventional for a U.S. president? Yeah, I think it's a fair question, too. People often have been asking me today, like, you know, why didn't you wait and find out more about the information of what the, the substance of the call was? In this case, we have known about this whistleblower allegation for some days, and already it was a huge story and extraordinary just because of the nature of it. And members of Congress, including Adam Schiff, had been kind of implying that they deduced it was probably the president who was involved. And we felt that knowing that the president himself was a subject of this complaint and the nature of it, a communication with a foreign leader, that that was significant enough to report and let the American people know about. Okay, well, we really would like to hear the rest of this story. And I'm sure there's a lot more coming out in the next day or two. So I thank